I saw quite a lot of things happening in South Africa. <laughs> I can't wait to be in South Africa because we are going to do mighty things through God who strengthens us. So before you preach the gospel, there's something that you ought to understand is you, und you need to understand why Jesus came. Why Jesus came. So when you understand why Jesus came, you can never be distracted from the core assignment. When you understand why Jesus came, you cannot be distracted. But if you are not aware of why Jesus came, that's why you would come up with all manner of messages and all manner of whatnot and whatnots because you, are, you, are, you don't even know why Jesus came. That will help you to preach the gospel. You cannot be distracted if you understand the reason why Jesus came. You will stay focused. Right. Look at uh, look at First Corinthians. My God, today, 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 mm. today is gonna be amazing. Make sure you've got your notebooks, notepads, Bibles. Uh, my Micah is watching from uh, watching from Gambia. Micah is watching from Gambia. So I want you to understand. Open your Bibles to the book of First Corinthians. Maso gija hataya hata. Le barasadija la hanta yabasiam. First Corinthians, first Corinthians chapter number two. First Corinthians chapter number two, first Corinthians chapter two from verse four to six. First Corinthians from two verse four, uh, verse four to six. Praise God. Are you there? First Corinthians. Micah is saying it's my first time here. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Mm, Micah, 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 Micah is your first time here. Hmm. I don't know why I'm seeing the side of education, acad academics with Micah. Micah, I don't know why I'm seeing academics, but anyway, we'll get into that. Let me get back to the word. But I'm seeing academics. I'm seeing the side of education. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, verse 4. Verse 4 to 6, and my speech, and my speech and my messages were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might rest in the, might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Yet among the mature, we do not impart wisdom, Although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. This is Paul. I'm just, I'm trying, I'm trying to build, I'm trying to build something here. Now watch this. First Timothy, watch this. First Timothy, make sure you've got your notebooks, notepads, you're writing these scriptures that I'm giving you. They will come handy in a few minutes. First Timothy chapter number two, verse four. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 4. The Bible says, Who desires, this is the will of the Father, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Remember the topics, the, the, the topic we did, the series we are dealing with is um, what then, what comes next, what's next after salvation. The will of the Father is that all men be saved and come to the knowledge. So the first thing is for you to be saved. The next thing is for you to come to the knowledge. First thing for you to be saved. For that is the will of the Father that all men be saved and come to the knowledge. So you are saved. So after salvation, what comes next is knowledge. Of the salvation you have received. So when you have knowledge of the salvation you have received. Your faith will be impactful. Your walk with Christ will be effective. So first thing is salvation. The second thing that comes after salvation. Is knowledge. Are you, are you still here with me? He says, for it is the desire of God, the Father, that is the will of the Father, that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of 
the truth. So when people are saying, oh, I need to understand the will of the Father, this is the will of the Father, that you become a vessel that preaches the gospel. You become a vessel that preaches the gospel. That is the will of the Father for your life. So when people say, I don't understand my will, I don't understand my destiny, that is your destiny. You becoming an engineer, like Prince becoming an engineer, that is not your destiny, that is your desire. That is your desire. There is a difference between a desire and destiny. So you always hear people say, oh yeah, my Somebody stole your destiny. Nobody can steal your destiny. Your destiny is in Christ and it is to preach the gospel. It is the will of the Father that all men be saved. So when you understand the will of the Father is the gospel. So you becoming a doctor, you becoming an engineer, you becoming uh, an academic specialist, all that is not your destiny, that is your desire. You desire that. But your destiny is the message to preach the gospel. For we have been called to the ministry of reconciliation. If you are born again, you are already into ministry. When you are born again, you are already into ministry. Because we are, when we are born again, we have been called into the ministry of reconciliation. Luffy Wami, it is good to see you. Bruce, it is good to see you. God bless you. God bless you. Kathy, it is good to see you. Now watch this. Please stay with me. I'm going to give you quite a lot of scripture because it's good for your spirit. Now watch this. For it, it is the will of the Father that all men be saved. Right. Let, let, me just, let me just punish a devil right there. Let me just punish a devil right there. When people start praying prayers like every witch in my village, wherever you are, fall down and die. That is witchcraft. Why? Because the will of the Father is all men be saved. So God's will and God's desire is that even those witches should come to a place of being born again. So that is the will of the Father. For he does not desire for any man to perish. That means witches and wizards. He does not desire for them to perish. So our role as believers, I'm talking about real believers here. Our role as believers is to preach the gospel to the witches, the wizards, the whatevers. That's our assignment. It is not for us to call, fall down and fire, fall down and die. My, my enemies, wherever you are, die. My enemies, die. That is not for believers. That is witchcraft. I want you to understand these things. The first thing I, I emphasized on is you have to understand the why Jesus came. The why. Why did he come? Why did he come? He came to save us. He did not come for you to, to make it. Because if you are in Christ, you have made it. But then, what then comes after, it is you understanding, having knowledge of what you have acquired. That's why the Bible would say, my people, they perish because they lack knowledge, not they lack power. They lack knowledge. So you are asking God for things that you have already received. So what you need is knowledge. Genesis, it is good to see you. God bless you. So after salvation, what comes next is knowledge. It is the will of the Father that all men be saved, salvation, and come and come to the knowledge of the truth. Who is the truth? The knowledge of the truth. Who is the truth? Jesus is the truth. Why? Because he says, I am the way, I am the, the truth, I am the life. Meaning, I am the truth. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Whom the truth sets free. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So when, 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 when you are born again, salvation, the next thing is for you to come to the knowledge of the truth of which the truth is a person. You have to know the truth. The truth is a person. So when you have known the truth, you have been set free. You are at liberty. 
you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free and what and whom the son or whom the truth sets free is free indeed so you being born again is just not good enough it is the best thing the first step but the next thing after being born again is acquiring knowledge of you to come to the knowledge of the truth meaning the knowledge of christ jesus who is the truth i hope you're understanding this so you need to come to knowledge you need to grow after salvation the next thing for you is to grow you ought to grow now look at first peter look at first peter praise god look at first peter first peter chapter 2 verse number 2 first peter 2 2 praise god answer saraya it is good to see you my beloved like a newborn infants long for pure 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 spiritual milk that by it you might grow into salvation desire spiritual milk listen i want you to understand this when the bible is talking about spiritual milk it's a mode of communication don't be walking around looking for milk people here start selling milk to you said oh this milk is spiritual it's in the bible no understand it's a mode of communication it's a mode of communication it was not literal that you start looking for milk that's why people you start sowing seeds for milk you have a milk crossover you have a milk what what all this is because people have failed to interpret the scriptures that milk there is not it's not literal as in milk milk so people that have failed to understand it, this is why you would go to certain places they'll give you milk for cleansing milk for cleansing because it's written in the bible spiritual milk no it is not literal it was metaphorical i want you to understand that as we are going because uh, I, 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 you have to Desire me that you may grow up into salvation. You may grow up into salvation. So that means after you're born again, you have to grow in understanding the salvation you have received. You have to grow. So when you grow in salvation, when you grow in the things that you have received, you become effectual, you become effective. Paul wrote a letter to Philemon in Philemon chapter 1, verse number 6. He says, let the sharing of your faith become effectual, effective, impactful. How does your faith become effective? By acknowledging every good thing that is not anything, not acknowledging anything, but acknowledging every good thing that is in you because you are in Christ. Did you get that? You acknowledge every good thing, not acknowledge everything. Acknowledge every good thing that is in you because you are in Christ. That means what is in Christ is what is in you. So when you are born again, we have to teach you for you to understand that what is in Christ is what is in you what christ can do is what you can do so when you get to a place of growth you can never be manipulated so you grow in the knowledge of salvation that you have received you grow in understanding of the salvation that you have received now second second peter i'm gonna give you quite a lot of scriptures because it is very good for your spirit. Second Peter. Second Peter. Second Peter. Second Peter chapter number 3 verse 18. Second Peter chapter 3 verse number 18. But grow in grace. Oh my God. My God. My God. The moment I start reading that scripture, I feel like punishing some devils. The Bible says, but grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to be. The day of eternity. The Bible says you grow. It says grow in grace and knowledge. He did not say sow a seed for grace. Yeah, let me punish some devils here. He did not say sow a seed 
for some grace. He did not say, tap into my grace. He did not say that. The Bible does not say, tap, you tap into a man's grace. The Bible does not say that you sow a seed for grace. The Bible says you grow in grace. And you grow in knowledge. So you grow in grace. You don't tap into grace. You don't sow seeds for grace. Oh yeah, you need to sow a seed for grace. The grace that is upon my life is heavy. You need to sow a seed for that grace. No sir, no ma'am. You need to grow in grace. You grow, you grow in grace. You grow in knowledge. So you cannot and cannot and cannot, I repeat, you cannot tap into a man's grace. There is no such thing like that. You grow in grace. Okay, let, let me give an example. 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 Uh, maybe you, 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 you have a desire of maybe the prophetic. All right? You have a desire, say, of the prophetic. You don't tap into someone's grace for you to have said, oh yeah, I need to tap into this man. He's, he's, he sees he's a prophet. No. What happens is you begin to grow in that area. You begin to study in that area. You begin to, 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 to search scriptures regarding that area. So when you begin to be acquainted with scriptures in regards to that area, whether it's prophecy, that is how you grow. That is how you grow. So you, you don't tap into a man's grace. But you grow in grace. You grow in knowledge. That's why the Bible would say, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that is not ashamed of the gospel, rightly dividing the word of truth. So what do we do when we are studying? We are growing. We are growing. Now, so the essence of of this gathering, the essence of a church, the essence of why uh, the Rome family is gathered in South Africa, the essence of that gathering is for you to grow. For you to grow. Look at John 21. Look at John 21. Look at John chapter 21, verse 15 to 17. John 21, verse 15 to 17. When they had finished breaking fast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, please pay attention. Because I'm a, today I'm just going to be teaching and punishing the devil. I'll be teaching and punishing the devil at the same time. Two in one. Teaching and punishing. When they had finished breaking fast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? than these he said to him yes lord you know that i love you and he said to him feed my lambs feed my sheep he, he repeated that three times simon son of jonah do you love me feed my sheep feed my lambs marry do you love me? This is Jesus asking. So for you to know that you love Jesus, you're going to feed his sheep. But he was addressing to, 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 uh, to Peter, who of which was, was an apostle that he had appointed. He said, Simon, 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 son of Jonah, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, I love you. He said, if you love me, feed my sheep. Because after salvation, the next thing that has to come is growth. They have to grow. But how will they grow? You have to feed them. He said, feed my sheep. He did not say, barbecue my sheep. I said, I'm going to be teaching and punishing the devil. 
He did not say barbecue my sheep. He did not say manipulate my sheep. He said feed my sheep, not barbecue my sheep. We have many people who have been barbecued in church by so-called shepherds. God punished the devil. Your reign of terror is over. God is raising up a generation that cannot be distracted, that will stick to the gospel as it is the pure, will preach the gospel with purity. And I'm glad that I'm part of that generation. And I'm glad that the Rome family is part of that generation. We cannot be distracted. We will not manipulate. He said, feed my sheep. He did not say, roast my sheep. Or manipulate my sheep. Feed. Give them Christ. Let them know the truth. And Philip findeth Nathanael in John 1 verse 45. And Philip findeth Nathanael and said, We have found him. <laughs> we have found him of whom the prophets, the law of Moses spoke about. We have to preach. We have to teach you for you to find him and for you to know him. And when you know the truth, you are set free. And Philip findeth Nathanael and said, We have found him. That means they had been looking for him. Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. He did not say roast my sheep. Our daughters are crying in the hands of men of God. Being roasted. The choir roasted. Protocol roasted. God punished the devil. You don't love Jesus. If you love Jesus, you will feed the sheep. You don't just come and start preaching nonsense. I told you I'm teaching and punishing the devil at the same time. Two in one. Today is two in one. <laughs> Look at Acts. Acts chapter 20. Who japako barosa higapaha. Penel, it is good to see you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. May God continue to use you. May God continue to use you and preach this gospel. You are a minister of the gospel. Preach the gospel. I don't know you. I'm seeing you for the first time here. But I hear you are a preacher. Minister of the gospel. Preach the gospel. Right. Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. Acts 20 verse 28. Acts 20 verse 28. And the Bible says, Pay careful attention to yourselves and uh, to all the flock. Pay close attention to yourselves and to all the flock. In which, my God, my God, my God, my God, in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseer. To care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. Oh my God, God punished the devil. God punished the devil. Oh, Shabbat, you, I'm speaking to pastors, ministers of the gospel, wherever you may be. Hear what the Lord is saying. I will read it again. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. God punished the devil. Pastors out there, whatever titles that you carry, the Bible says pay close attention. To the saints, you have been made an overseer by the Holy Spirit. To take care of the church, the people are not your people. You are just an overseer. These people are not your people. You don't have people. You are an overseer. And God has said, take care of these people that you have been made an overseer. But even though that, you have to understand that Jesus paid the price with his blood for these people. If preaching is not for you, I would command you to step aside. 
Jesus paid with his own blood for these people that you are manipulating, these people that you are roasting in church. These are not your people. You don't have people. They are not your people. I would, I would call Moses right now. And Moses will echo and say, Pharaoh, let my people go. They are not your people. God punish the devil. He said, take care of the, the flock. Take care of the church. You have, been an, you have been made an overseer by the Holy Ghost. Which Jesus paid the price. Hi, you, you pastors. Your blood could do nothing, but you are here claiming people. Say, these are my people, my people. You don't have people. Ha, I had said two in one. Let, let me just teach. Because I feel like punishing the devil. Jesus is saying, I paid for these people with my blood my own blood and you have been made an apostle you have been made a pastor you have been made an evangelist you have been made a prophet by the holy ghost you have been made overseers do you know what what is to oversee to oversee something if i come to you and i say i want you to just look at this oversee this project i'm doing the project is not yours you are just somebody who is overseeing. You are an overseer. You are just tending. So Jesus is telling you that you just oversee. He said, Pharaoh, let my people go that they may save me. Pharaoh, allow the people of God to go so that they can save the master, Jesus Christ. Our soon coming king. Don't hold them in bondage. Who are you? You don't have people. They are not your people. Anyway, let's get back to... And then let's get back to Peter. He said, Peter, feed my sheep. That word feed is to tend. Tend to grow. That word feed is tend to grow. So you, you have to grow in salvation. You have to grow in the salvation that you have received. Question. <sighs> Here is the question that you want to ask. Here is the question that you want to ask. That now how do I know that I am growing? How do I know that I am growing? I know it is a question that many people would want to ask. But how do you know that you are growing? How do I know that I am growing spiritually? Remember this. Remember this, age is automatic. Age is automatic. You don't have to do anything to grow. You are just there. Just be there. You will be 60 soon. Just be there. You will be 80 soon. You don't have to do anything. Age is automatic. But growth is intentional. Hmm... Did you hear that? Age is automatic, but growth is intentional. With age, you contribute nothing to your age. You just grow. You know, you just age. But with growth, it's intentional. It's intentional. So it's important that you invest in your growth. Now, look at Luke chapter 2. <clears throat> oh God, I don't even know if I'm going to finish this broadcast. Because there's so much that I need to share. My goodness. Look at Luke chapter, um, Luke chapter 2, <clears throat> verse 43 to 48. Luke chapter 2, verse 43 to 48. Age is automatic. Growth is intentional. 100%. <laughs> Luke chapter 2, verse 43 to 48. And the Bible says, And when he had feast, and, and when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but supposing to be in the group, they went. I want you to understand something. When we say age is automatic, you don't contribute to it, but growth is intentional. 
You look at Jesus at the age of 12. He's in the synagogues dealing with uh, Sadducees, Pharisees. These were teachers of the gospel. He's dealing with them. Now, watch this. He's dealing with them. Apostle Isaac, it is good man of God, man. I, I honor you, sir. I honor you, sir. I honor, I honor you, sir. And my, my, my prayer is may God continue to, to use you, continue to push as you continue to stand on the undiluted gospel, continue, sir, continue soldiering on. Praise God. I, I get excited when I see another man, another woman of God who just stands on the truth. I get excited. I get excited. So Jesus at the age of, of 12 is in the synagogues. He's dealing with uh, Pharisees and Sadducees. These were teachers of the word. These were, you know, teachers of the word. But it gets to a point whereby they started now. Jesus was there. Remember. Age is automatic. Growth is intentional. At the age of 12, they would not have expected what Jesus would say. For they were thinking, ah, he's a 12-year-old. He's a 12-year-old. But the things that he began to say, they began to question him. That what manner of wisdom is coming from a 12-year-old? So you have, we have 50-year-old men or 60-year-old men that talk like 2-year-olds. And we have 12-year-olds that talk like 60-year-olds. Wisdom. So growth is intentional. Age is automatic. So this is where many people are manipulated. You hear people say, I've been in the ministry for 25, 30, 60 years. So I have experience. Do you know you can have 60 years in ministry and heading the wrong way? And there comes somebody who is only two weeks in ministry, but heading the right way. It's not about age, it's about growth. Age, automatic. Growth, intentional. Temba, it is good to see you. God bless you. So you being in ministry 50 years does not validate that you have wisdom. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Jesus was only 12 but he started, he started speaking to people that were Pharisees, Sadducees, teachers of the word, that were there, scholars, people that would just sit at the table going through scriptures. Jesus, at the age of 12, he comes in, he walks in, and he begins to speak with authority and boldness. So it's not age. Don't be fooled by age. I didn't say that. I see it with Jesus. At 12, <laughs> at 12, at 12, he's speaking amongst Pharisees and Sadducees, teachers of the word. These were scholars. But this is a 12 year old that is filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> it's not about age. That's why many of you, you <laughs> let me leave that. Let me leave that for today. I'll leave that for today. Second Corinthians. Let's get straight back to this uh, word, man. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Let's go back to Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter three. Se Second Corinthians chapter four, verse number three. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Even if our gospel is hid, it is hid to those who are perishing in their case. The God of this world has blinded their minds. has blinded their minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. My goodness gracious. Remember, the kind of information we receive after salvation detects how we grow. The sort of messages, sort of teachings, sort of the, the, the information that you receive after you're born again, after salvation, the sort of teachings that you listen to after salvation will detect how you grow. So after salvation, the next thing you are hearing, there's a witch in your village, every altar in your village, you are going to grow in fear. You will be so much acquainted with witches and wizards. This is why you start now 
hallucinating. You start seeing something, saying, so, "Ooh, I think it's a, it's a demon." Ooh, because you have been acquainted to such teaching. So what you listen to after salvation detects how you grow. Meaning, you can only grow based on the information you receive. You can only grow based on the information that you receive. And many, they give up based on the info. Let me punish the devil for two minutes here. Many, <clears throat> many give up based on the information that they receive after salvation. So many give up because of what they hear after salvation. And many we see how you are growing based on the information you receive after salvation. So if you are hearing messages like, you will make it. And if you don't make it, you are going to turn around and say, God, hey, God has deserted me. God has done this to me. Hey, God, you don't love me. God, why me? Because of the information you received after salvation, because of the teachings that you receive after salvation, they detect how you will grow. They, de they will detect your direction. It's what you hear. It's what you hear. It's what you hear. That's why the Bible would say, take heed of what you hear. So if you are hearing messages like, you will make it this year, you will get married, yeah, this, th such messages. And then you don't get married in that year that they say it. And then you don't make it. The next thing you're going to say, God does not love me. Yet that is not what we use to measure the love of God. We don't use material things to measure. That's carnality. You're being carnal. That because I don't have a, I don't have a shoe, so God does not love me. Hey, 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 hey. You not having a shoe, it has nothing to do with God not loving you. God loves you. It's what you have heard. So people hear things like, if you don't have a nice car, if you don't have a nice big house, you don't have God. You need more God. <laughs> you hear people talk nonsense. Look at verse 4 of that 2 Corinthians. It says, in their case, in their case, the God of this world has blinded their eyes. They has blinded their minds. Blinded their minds. When the Bible says, take heed, if the, if, sorry, if the, 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 the gospel is hid, if the gospel is healed, is hid to those who are perishing, that word hid is kalupto, the Greek rendering. And I will explain the reason why I, I explain words. Or I will explain this. I will explain why I explain words. Because if you fail to understand the meaning of a, the scripture or the meaning of a word, you will end up in a different direction. Because words are powerful. They are not just in the Bible for just being in the Bible. But they mean something that is relevant. So I have to explain words for you to understand. So I'm going to be explaining a few words today that will help you. So that word, if the gospel is hid, that word hid, the Greek because you have to understand the Bible was written in Hebrew and Greek and English came 2,000 years after, 800 years after, which means most words that are interpreted in English. That's why I always tell people never use a dictionary to explain Bible. Never use a dictionary to explain the Bible because the Bible... <laughs> anyway... If the, if the gospel is hid, that word hid in the Greek is kalupto, meaning if something unknown, something covered, covered up, something that is covered up, meaning you can hear what I am saying. God help me. I'm about to say something that might move you a bit. Yeah. Right now I'm preaching, teaching, slash. Yeah. You are hearing me. But you are hearing what I'm saying. Okay? But you are, you are not hearing what I'm saying. Does that make sense? You can, be, you can be listening to what I'm saying. But you are not hearing what I'm saying. 
So you can listen to what I'm saying right now, but you cannot understand what I'm communicating. So that is the word kalupto. If the gospel is hid, it is hid. Hid kalupto. That means you can hear what I'm saying. <laughs> but you are not understanding what I'm saying. That's why many people will come here, I will say what I say, and the next thing they'll be doing the same thing that I was saying, this is not Bible. They'll do the same thing. That means they were listening. Some people would come here and just be on this broadcast to just show that they are supporting me. I don't need that support. I don't. Don't come on this broadcast to say, yeah, we just have to support the men of soul that we see we are supporting. Don't come. I think I'm just going to have a day that I'll just be punishing devils. But some, I caught them in the spirit, having conversation, couples having conversation. You can't, listen, let me explain this. You can't, you can't come and sit down, you and your wife, sit there and discuss about me. My only advice, I will not go deeper, my only advice to, to the husband, listen to your wife. What she told you is what you need to listen to. She told you, let it go. Listen to that. Otherwise, you know me. Me, I don't do... I punish the devil. So this is a... A sweet warning. Listen to your wife. If the gospel is hid, it is kalupto. Covered and known. That means I can say something and you are not still hearing. What I'm saying, you are not communicating. What I'm communicating. So that means what I'm communicating is hid from you. So it will be hid from you. Now look at First John. <clears throat> Praise God. <laughs> you can't sit there. I can even tell you what you were wearing. What your wife was wearing while you were discussing. How can you discuss about me? Saying what I'm preaching is bringing division in the body of Christ. No, sir. What I preach is enlightening people so that you can manipulate them. Don't try me. Don't try me. I can tell you what you are wearing, where you are standing, what you are saying. I can tell you that by the Spirit. And these are things that I teach the, the Rome family how to operate in the Spirit because everybody can operate in that level. There's no tapping. It's just a matter of growing. So say, with all due respect, let's just preach the gospel, the undiluted. Don't think that we are coming here to bring division in the body. No, I'm not bringing any division. I'm bringing enlightenment so that people cannot be manipulated. I'm bringing the truth. Who is the truth? Jesus. I preach Christ. Anyway, that is for another day. But I'm keeping a whip for you. First John. First John chapter 2, verse 11. First John chapter 2, verse 11. <clears throat> but whoever hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he's going because the darkness is what? Has blinded his eyes. Blinded his eyes. Blinded his eyes. Been blinded, covered, kalupto. Right? But whoever hates his brother, he is in darkness and he walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because darkness has blinded his eyes. That means you have seen certain things and then you are quick to judge. You are in darkness because you have been blinded, kalupto, covered. Now, <clears throat> look at this now. Look at John. Look at John 12. John chapter 12, verse 40. John chapter 12, verse number 14. John chapter 12, verse... He has blinded their eyes. He has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts. Lest they see with their eyes and understand with their heart and turn and I would heal them. So they were blinded to the point that they could not even see. Blinded. Blinded, blinded, blinded. Now pay attention. 
my God, I want you to pay attention. Whenever you see, are you still here with me? Praise God, you're still here with me. I know my Rome family in South Africa is there watching. God bless you. Well, I'm excited about you. Now watch this. <clears throat> Whenever you see the words eyes and ears, so the eyes of understanding, ears, all those they refer to the spiritual man. Eyes. Let the eyes of your understanding, eyes of your... It's not talking about your eyes being literally, you're blinded, you're, you don't see. No. It's speaking of the spiritual man. Eyes of understanding. Eyes enlightened. Your mind enlightened. is speaking about the spiritual man. It's not speaking about the natural. So you can still be seen but not seen. You can have ears but not hearing. So it's not you having ears. No. He's speaking of the spiritual man. The ability to hear what I'm saying, not with your ears. So when you hear sight, when you see eyes, you see heart, mind, understanding, enlightened, is referring to the spiritual man. All right? Look at... Um, I know why I'm saying all this. You will get it in a few minutes. Please, I, I beseech you. You will get it. You will get it. <clears throat> Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 3 to 4. Second Corinthians 4, 3 to 4. And even if the gospel is hid, it is hid to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded their minds. Again, blinded. Remember, where it's not literal. He's speaking of the spirit man. So they have blinded their minds. Of the unbelievers so the god of this world is satan and has blinded their minds so he is blinded so the gospel will be hid you'll be hid where the gospel is hid in your mind not you but in the unbeliever the gospel is hid in their mind pay attention the gospel is hid in their minds the word blinded, again, in the Greek is to flu. To flu, meaning what? Right. I'll, I'll explain that in two minutes. I emphasize, watch this. I emphasize much on words for one reason. Because most denominations, most churches are, are birthed or are founded on wrong usage of biblical words most churches are birthed on the misuse or the misinterpretation of biblical words and terms that's why i emphasize much on words on words on words let me give you an example you hear people talking about catch the fire Catch the fire. My question will be, what fire am I catching? And they will tell you in the Bible, it talks about the, Jesus will baptize you in, in the Holy Ghost and fire. That fire is not for now. That fire is not for believers. That fire is for unbelievers. Those that reject the gospel, that fire is for them. It is not for now. Catch the fire. You hear people say, Holy Ghost fire. The Holy Ghost has got no fire. So it's terms like that. Words like that. When they are misinterpreted, you form a doctrine. Catch the fire. Holy Ghost fire. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. There is no such nonsense as fire of the Holy Ghost. Mountain ministries, deliverance ministries, the, the misuse of certain words in the Bible have birthed certain doctrines and denominations 
based on not being able to rightly divide the word of truth. There is no such thing as fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire, there is no such thing as fire of the Holy Ghost. They mix, they mix, they take a scripture from here. The fire came upon them when they were, the fire, listen, on the day of Pentecost, when this talks about the fire like of tongues, it was not literal. It's not like fire was, was burning. No. It was just talking about how it was blazing or what fire does. Fire, what fire does. It was a mode of communication. That fire would just erupt. If, it's, if you start something, catches fire. It's hard to control it. It just blazes through. That is what they were saying about the, the Holy Ghost when they began to speak in tongues as of. The Bible says tongues as of. As of fire. Not tongues of fire. So you hear people now coming, oh man, I was, this guy is speaking tongues of fire. There's no such nonsense. The Bible says they speak in tongues as of fire, as of, as of, not tongues of fire, as of fire. So people just take what they want and they run with it, tongues as of fire. So that's why I pay attention to words. As of, they did not say tongues of fire, say tongues as of fire, not tongues of fire. Catch the fire, Holy Ghost fire. <laughs> There's no such thing as Holy Ghost fire. Fire of the Holy Ghost, fire of the, the Holy Ghost has got no fire. That fire is not for now, that fire is for unbelievers. And it was not even meant for it's those for those that reject it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. But the one that rejects the gospel is condemned. So the fire is not for believers. The fire is for those that reject the gospel. So why am I saying fire of the Holy Ghost as if the Holy Ghost is God fire? You see, the misusing of the misusage of certain biblical words brings people to a place of... Uh, False doctrines. That's how false doctrines start. Oh, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Catch the fire. Oh, there are people are receiving fire of tongues of fire. <laughs> tongues of fire from where? They speak in tongues as of fire. As of. Comparison of their tongues and fire. Mode of communication. Be able to rightly divide the word of truth. And just come and i used to do that i used to say oh father i pray oh fire of the holy ghost especially when you're trying to cast something oh fire of the holy ghost fire of the holy ghost fire there's no such nonsense again edge is automatic growth is intentional so if old people are still saying that just no edge is automatic but growth is intentional <laughs> yay Fire of the Holy Ghost. Look at Luke chapter 6. I want to show you something. Because we want to deal with these words. I want to show you something. Luke chapter 6. You know, Luke chapter 8. Verse 18. Luke 8 verse 18. The Bible says, Take care then how you hear. Take care how you hear. For to the one who has more will be given. And from one who has not yet even that he thinks that he has will be taken away. Key word there, I want you to pay attention, is take care then how you hear. Take care how you hear. It's important how you hear. And it's important who you listen to. Take care how you hear. Another, another word that has been misused. The mark of the beast. The mark of the beast. Right now, you in your head here, you think that we are going to have a 66666 six, 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 written on our foreheads. Written on your forehead. Yeah? We have the 666. Six, six. It is symbolic. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a mark of the beast. Let me tell you something. That 6666, six, 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 whatever number, it was a mode of communication. He, remember John 
I'm going to do the book of John, uh, the book of Revelation, because many people don't know how to explain Revelation. They just, ah, oh, they just take scriptures from the book of Revelation. You have to understand the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation was again a vision. What is a vision? A vision is a metaphor. What is it? a metaphor needs to be interpreted because it is a vision. It's a metaphor. The book of Revelation is a vision. A vision is not literal. <laughs> it's a metaphor. It has to be interpreted. So while John was speaking, because it's John the revelator, in a vision, these are things that he saw in a vision. Why do we say visions have to be interpreted? Was it not uh, Paul, uh, no, Peter, who was hungry at one point? And then the Bible says, and then he saw in a vision an animal that he had claws like what and all that. And then he said, I'm not going to eat that. This is, this is not clean. And G Jesus said what? Hey, 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 who are you to call what I have blessed unclean? Kill and eat. That means sometimes in a vision. That's why you see the, 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 the church is not based on visions, but on doctrine. Your vision has to be in alignment with scripture. So the mark of the beast, the 66666, was a mode of communication. It was symbolic of the Antichrist. It was a mode of communication. The same way that they will talk about the bread. It was a mode of communication. Speaking of what? Referring to the body. The 666 is a mode of communication communicating the Antichrist. And Antichrist, again, is not a person. People said, hey, Bin Laden is an Antichrist. People came and said, Obama is an Antichrist. People then came and said, Donald uh, J. Trump is Antichrist. Antichrist is not a person. Antichrist is a teaching. Antichrist. Anti. So any teaching that, uh, that denies the deity and the humanity, of Christ is anti-Christ. Antichrist is not a person. Antichrist is a teaching. The, any teaching that denies that Jesus is God is antichrist. 666 is not a number. It's a mode of communication. The antichrist is a teaching. Look at 1 John. Let me give you scripture. Because you say, oh, it's just a... Let me give you scripture. Praise God. Look at 1 John. Look at 1 John. 1 John. 1 John chapter 4 verse number 3. 1 John chapter 4 verse number 3. 1 John 4 verse number 3. And every spirit that does not call. Okay, Baros here. Let's pretext. By this you will know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is is not of God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. This is 2,000 years ago. They are saying that you heard that it was coming. Now it is here. The Antichrist. So Antichrist is not a person. Antichrist is a teaching. Any teaching that re rejects that Jesus came, the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, that Jesus is God, that message is antichrist. Period. So we have to understand words. That's why I emphasize much on words. You cannot act beyond your knowledge. You cannot act beyond your knowledge. So right. Let's go back to, to our, 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 the word I told you. To flu. When we're talking about blinded, we're talking about you. The eyes have been blinded. And I said, I'll, I'll explain to flu in a minute. Their eyes, their hearts hardened. Eyes blinded. Minds blinded. That word blinded is to flu. Meaning that it is a clouded vision. A clouded vision. Meaning something is present. But you cannot see it clearly. Something is, you can say, ah, there's something there, but I can't see it clearly. That is to flu. Blinded. Not that it is not there. It is there, but you can't see clearly. It is there, but you cannot see it clearly. So it does not mean that 
the devil blinded their eyes as in these eyes no he his main target he goes ahead how he blinds this is how the devil blinds you do you want to see how the devil blinds you the devil blinds you in a very subtle way he goes ahead of you and he gives you misleading information so that you cannot receive the message of Christ. That's why many of you will be told, don't listen to that man, don't listen to him, don't listen. The devil, that's how he blinds you, he goes ahead of you, gives you misleading information so that when the real information comes, you will not be able to receive it. Look at 2 Corinthians. Let me give you scripture. You say, oh, scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 11. So that we would not be outwitted by Satan if we are not ignorant of his designs. The devil cannot do us anything unless we are ignorant of his device, but we are not ignorant of his devices. Ignorant of his designs, ignorant of his devices. Now pay attention. The word devices there is ignorant of his thoughts. His thoughts is the same as thoughts, devices, thoughts. What? So what does Satan do? Satan plants thoughts in your mind. He will plant thoughts in your mind. So when we are talking about strongholds, when we are talking about strongholds, are pulled down. Pay attention. They are pulled down by preaching. So what am I doing right now? I am pulling down strongholds. Right now, I'm pulling down strongholds. So strongholds are pulled down by the preaching. Look at 2 Corinthians. I want to show you something. 2 Corinthians. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. It says, So that we could, we could not be outwitted by Satan, for we, are not, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So meaning what? We do not let the devil take advantage of us by the knowledge of Christ. So we don't let the devil take advantage of us. How? By the knowledge of Christ. Hence, you need to grow. That's the reason why you need to grow. Meaning, if you are ignorant of his thoughts, his devices, he takes advantage of you. That's why your papas uh, will tell you not to listen to me. Don't listen to him. No, he's bringing confusion in the body of Christ. How am I confusing anyone here? Some people have been told, don't listen to me. Please, it's okay. By all means, it's fine. Don't listen to me. Don't. The reason why they are saying that is that if you listen to me, you cannot be manipulated. So the devil goes ahead, gives misleading information. Don't listen to him. He's trying to bring division in the body of... How am I bringing division in the body of Christ? I'm actually bringing enlightenment in the body of christ so they'll tell you not to listen so that they'll be able to continue manipulating you sowing seeds oils and uh, drinking ribinas and uh, drinking milk and they will ask you to sow seeds but i come here and i tell you the truth you don't need to do that it's not biblical so if you listen to me ah you'll be like hey so you see now see yourself <laughs> see your life <laughs> so they won't allow you to listen to me because they have got their messages that they are preaching generational cases family patterns to be destroyed you need to sow a seed how to make it how <laughs> my god so but sound bible teaching is is a fight when i tell you when i tell you that jesus paid it all it's a fight you be like, no, but I, I have to do something. I have to sow a seed for this. I have to, I have to give so that I will be given. When I tell you that Jesus paid it all, it was not part payment. He paid in full. It's a fight. Your mind, because the devil has gone ahead of you and has told you 
played with your thoughts and told you that no you have to do something for god to do something and then when i come and i tell you that you don't need you, you god has done it all for you all you need to do is to 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 acknowledge what he has already done and when you acknowledge your faith becomes effectual that means when you acknowledge what christ has already done you see manifestation but you'll be told you have to do something for god to do this you have to break the alabaster oil <laughs> what alabaster oil are you going to break something that you treasure the most you have to break it the alabaster oil or the oil has to break so when the oil breaks what is going to happen with the oil so you have to understand these things but i have news for you but i am committed to run the devil out of business <laughs> i am committed to run the devil out of business yeah i cannot be distracted i know where i came from i know where i came from the way god trains you is an indication of where you are going is an indication of your assignment ahead of you look at second corinthians angela it is good to see you god bless you look at second corinthians second corinthians chapter 3 verse number 13 to 14 second corinthians 3 13 to 14 i'm about to close though <clears throat> not like moses who would put a veil over his face so that the israelites may not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end but their minds were hardened for to this day when they read pay attention hey 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 to this day when they read the old covenant the same veil remains unlifted did i say that i didn't should i read it again you have people that love preaching from the old testament without rightly divide i'm not saying the old testament don't read it the old testament is there for our learning but you have to read it with the eyes of the new testament but if you read it as it is that's why you come up with the spirit of Jezebel. Yeah, what, what is after you in your family? Je eh, 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 eh. The veil is still covered. Listen to what uh, Paul is saying. He says, not like Moses who put a veil over their face so that the Israelites might gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to the end. Verse 14, but their minds were hardened. For to this day, when they read the old covenant, the same veil remains unlifted. Because only through Christ is it taken away. So when you're reading the Old Testament, you read them in the light of Christ. That is the only time when the veil is removed. If not, you are still in the old covenant. I did not say that. It's in your Bible. So people that read the Old Testament without the eyes of Christ, without rightly dividing, they have a veil. There is a veil. Hearing they hear, but they hear not. Seeing they see, but they see not. Why the veil? Just like Adam and Eve. Watch this. I want to show you the veil, what we're talking about, the veil. The veil, remember, covered, covered, covered. They cannot see. They cannot see. Watch this. Hearing they hear, but they cannot hear. Just like Adam and Eve in the garden. Just like Adam and Eve in the garden. Watch this. Pay attention. Minister Steph, it is good to see you. Right, watch this. <clears throat> Just like in the garden, the veil. Watch this. I want you to pay attention. Just like in the garden, the Bible talks about this is what you grew up thinking, right? You grew up thinking this and you've been taught this. And most of you right now, you still think of this. That Adam and Eve, they were eating in the garden. They were eating. You said, oh, they ate the fruit. And most of you now, you're manipulated. You said, oh, don't touch the, the your tithe is the, is the first fruit. Oh, no, the, the fruit. Don't eat the fruit. 
See what happened to Adam and Eve. They ate the fruit. There was no eating in, in, in the garden. Adam and Eve did not eat nothing. But when you read that with the veil, because the veil can only be removed when you read the Old Testament with the light of Christ. That means when we rightly divide the word of truth, remember the Old Testament is Christ concealed. The New Testament is Christ revealed. So there was no eating with Adam and Eve. There was no eating. So that is the veil whereby you hear they were eating. You are now thinking, oh, they were eating apple and Adam took an apple, and, uh, Eve took an apple and then gave the apple to, that is the picture. That is the picture that has been painted to us. Even in the, in the, the, the children's books, that's the picture that has been painted. Them passing each other fruits and the snake. <laughs> My goodness. Again, why I pay attention to words is because many doctrines and many um, religions have been birthed based on the misinterpretation of biblical words and understanding, not being able to rightly divide the word of truth. Now watch this. Adam and Eve, there was no eating there in the garden. But in, 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 in their mind, in their mind, in their mind, there is an in, 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 in the mind of those with the veil, there is an eating. Now look at Matthew. I want to show you so that you understand that there was no eating in, in Adam and Eve. They were not eating nothing. Remember, Matthew. Look at Matthew 15. I hope you're still here. Matthew 15, verse 10 to 11. Matthew 15, verse 10 to 11. The Bible says, And he called the people to him, and he said to them, Hear and understand. Hear and understand that means there should be a hearing and then an understanding <laughs> it is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person it is not what goes in the mouth that defiles a person stay there but what comes out of the mouth this defiles the person so it is not that they were eating it is not they are eating defiled nothing But it is what comes out of. So what came out of the mouth of Adam and Eve? Remember, the garden, the tree that was in the garden was Christ. Because he says, I am the tree of life. So what they did is they rejected. So it is not what they ate. It is what came out of their mouth. So what came out of their mouth? The rejection of Christ. They rejected Christ. Remember, I taught you this last week that eating is speaking. Eating is speaking. So it is not what they ate. It is what came out. So what came out of them? The rejection of the tree of life. They rejected Christ in the garden. Because Christ was the tree in the garden. Because remember, Moses wrote in shadows, in types, in metaphors. And and and. And those shadows and those metaphors have to be explained. That's why Jesus in Luke 24, beginning at Moses and in all the prophets, he, in all the scriptures, he began to expound to them the things concerning himself. Uh, John chapter 1 verse 45, And uh, Philip findeth Nathanael and said, We have found him of whom the law of Moses, the prophets, the sounds spoke about. Where did they speak about Jesus? In the shadows, the tree of life, the ark, the brazen serpent. So what did Adam and Eve do? They rejected Christ. The tree of life. So it's not what they ate. The Bible is telling you that it is not what you eat that defiles the body, but it is what comes out of your mouth. So what came out of their mouth? Rejection of the tree of life. So there was no eating in the garden. So a stronghold, watch this, go back to this, come, come, come back with me, come back with me. A stronghold is a consistent information. So right now I'm pulling down strongholds. So strongholds is not some spiritual uh, gods that are, you know, every stronghold in my life, every stronghold. Ah, no, 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 no. You see, you, because you've been mistaught. Strongholds are in the mind. Pulling down of strongholds. Every imagination and thoughts, those are strongholds. So a stronghold is not like some, some person, some spiritual something is, is, is standing before you and holding your progress. 
Every stronghold from my village, from my what, what, from here, what, what. Strongholds, mind. Pulling down of strongholds. Every thoughts and imagination. So strongholds, what I'm doing right now, I'm pulling down strongholds. So strongholds are pulled down by the preaching or teaching. So strongholds, it's a consistent information that you keep hearing. Generational case, generational case, that becomes a stronghold. So we have to preach the gospel so that we pull down those strongholds. So strongholds, not some, some, some angel, some, some demon holding your progress. Okay. Go back to uh, 2 Corinthians. I want to show you something. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Uh, I'm about to close. That's why I'm now pushing this thing. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 3. Watch this. But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by this cunning, your thoughts will be led astray. Your thoughts, your thoughts. Oh, he did not say your the, the apple. Ah, ah, your thoughts becomes. You see, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Just as, just as the serpent deceived, if by this cunning, your thoughts, your what, your thoughts, your thoughts, your thoughts, your thoughts will be will be led astray so what is led astray if i can get you to think right if i can get you to think right your life will take a different turn but it is your thoughts so the strongholds your thoughts strongholds it's a, a consistent information no stay there but I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Now, this was to believers that had already been born again, received. Yeah? So who were... These are believers who were taught nonsense. So he's now saying, I'm afraid... That you might end up be deceived just the way the, the, the serpent deceived Eve. How? Well, you, you, you see, by, by, by your, your thoughts will be led astray. You'll be led astray. You'll be led astray. Many people have been led astray by teachings. Why? Because teachings, they target your mind. Your mind connects with your thoughts. Your thoughts connect with your actions. So he says, I'm afraid, this was to believers, that you might be deceived. You're hearing nonsense, believers that are taught nonsense. So believers, unbelievers, an unbeliever was blinded that they may not receive. A believer is corrupted. Did you get that? Unbeliever is blinded that they may not receive. Remember, to blinded, calupto, covered. That means there is something, but it's covered. So believers are corrupted by what they hear. Look at Philippians. Prophet Kemp Jackson, it's good to see you, sir. God bless you. <clears throat> Look at uh, Philippians. I'm closing now. That's why I'm pushing this thing. Uh, Zabagabatosh. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 7. <clears throat> And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That means your minds have to be guarded. Your minds have to be guarded. The word mind there in the Greek is noima. noima. It refers to your thinking patterns. Your thinking patterns have to be guided, guarded, guarded. Now pay attention. Your thinking is involved in, in believing the gospel, right? Your thinking is involved in you growing spiritually. Because remember, we are dealing with what happens then after salvation. You have to grow spiritually. So your thinking is involved. So if your thinking is involved, the enemy will come for your mind. So that you don't think right. 
Now watch this. Ephesians chapter 4. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17. I'm closing. That's why I'm pushing. Ephesians chapter 4 verse number 17. Praise God. Watch this. The Bible says, Now this I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do, in the fut futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of their hearts. Their reasoning is vanity. So the gospel corrects your reasoning so you can believe. Look at verse 18. It says, they are hardened in their understanding alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness. Hardness, hardness. That word hardness, again, is the same word as callous. It's the same word as callous. Now there's, there's something that I want to deal with. Let me close with this. Let me close with this. <clears throat> Many of you, you speak about repentance. Yeah, you need to repent. You need to repent. You need to repent. You need to repent. Now let's look at repentance from a biblical interpretation, not from a dictionary interpretation. Because you will understand everything that I was saying about the mind, the mind being corrected, the mind being corrected, the mind being corrected, the mind being corrected. Uh, greetings from Germany, Peter Pra. Oh, Peter Pra, Peter, 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 Peter. Hmm, Jabagatusha Lagatia. You know, every time that comes in, you know, the first time here, I get excited, especially with Peter Pra. He's in, um, he's in Germany. Ah, praise God. Welcome, sir. Praise God. Praise God. Welcome. Let me call you Apostle Peter Pra. <laughs> let me call you apostle let me call you an apostle for today let me call you apostle peter pra Alebatosa. so let's get back to our message because otherwise i'll start with peter pra here and i'll start i'll now end up i'll now end up with him in uh, in kumasi we we'll end up in ghana with peter pra and when we are in ghana and then we end up seeing him around men of god and you know we will end up going places but for now <laughs> let's stick to the word <laughs> but i'll call you apostle for today praise god let's get back to the word uh where were we where were we hey hey are you still here or you're sleeping <laughs> he said very true uh men of god i am cold uh yeah you're cold you're cold you're cold you are cold but you see you are you are favored because i see prophetic men prophetic men in ghana uh around you yo 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 ah peter pra let me preach here let me preach let me say very true i'm from ghana yeah it's okay let's 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 forget that let's get back to the word i need to finish i need to finish this because i promise south africa will be praying for the uh mandobo shataya lembroski azuja hmm Peter Pra, this you might not know, but you might have been told this before. Ha, I don't even know how to say this. Reason why God is going to use you more than you think, it is because of your heart. Say you are a humble man. Your humility. Your humility. You are, oh my God. Oh. You are so humble, even around people. You don't, you, you feel like, you know, ah. Oh, anyway, let's leave that. Obviously, let's leave that. But your humbleness and your humility, oh God, your humbleness and your humility. Ha. Huh. Anyway, let's. Oh, spiritual father is in Kumasi. Your spiritual father is in Kumasi. There is only one man I know in Kumasi. And that is um, uh, VK. I'll just give you initials. VK. Yeah? VK. 
Because I know people here who say, he's talking about men of God. He's to, eh, eh, eh. I'm, I'm just talking to Peter Pry here. VK. VK. Yeah? VK. 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 You know what I'm talking about? Only you and me. <laughs> and I don't want people here saying, he's talking about, I don't talk about men of God here. I preach the gospel. But it's VK, your spiritual father, Kumasi, VK. Anyway, wait, wait, wait. Are you people? You're distracting me. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 17. Praise God. We're back. So now I say this, I testify in the Lord that you, you don't walk like the Gentiles in their futility of their minds, meaning their reasoning, their reasoning, their reasoning is what? Vanity. So the gospel corrects, the gospel corrects your reasoning so you can believe. The gospel corrects your reasoning so you can believe. Tabarodia. Oh, now you, you, you said it. He's uh, Prophet Kusi Boateng, Victor. VK. Victor Kusi Boateng. I said VK. I didn't want to say the names because you know, people come here and they start saying, he's saying names of men of God. No, I'm not. Praise God. Where were we? Yeah, you people. So their minds were blinded, Carlos. Their minds were blinded, Carlos, meaning, so now we're getting back to repentance because people are talking about, you need to repent, you need to repent, you need to repent, repentance, 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 repentance. Do you even know repentance? Do you know repentance? What is repentance? People think repentance is a turning away from, is changing behavior. That's what you know. According to dictionary, dictionary will tell you repentance is change of behavior, but uh, now, lady, uh, it's good to see you. God bless you. Namibia is in the building. Praise God. Noel, it is good to see you, sir. God bless you. Now, watch this. Let's get back to the word. Repentance. That is the key. That is the key. Repentance is the key. Because your remember, your mind is involved in salvation. Your mind is involved in salvation. Repentance is not crying. Please hear me and hear me well. <laughs> <laughs> ah, prophetess Rosemary, it is good to see you. Repentance is not crying. <laughs> There's no such thing as preaching the gospel of repentance. Please pay attention to what I'm saying. Before Prania, Zuja Liga Barahadia, Tron Tegija. Uh, Peter Pry is saying you are too much. Uh, no, no, say that that VK used to be my grandfather. So I know him. I know him personally. Good man. He's a good man. Good man. Now, let's get back to repentance. So repentance is not a change of mind. It's not a it's not it's not, it's, it's not crying. Repentance is not crying. Ah, you're crying. You say you're repented. No, that's not repentance. Rato baskia baradia. Jatola ki mantrohodia. Sujala. Ahete peregia non trahadi. Jantoliga barahadia. So, during, for, for you to receive salvation, salvation, you kalobaria suntelegia sujala hatatayamanda. You use your mind for salvation. For you to believe, you use your mind, right? Are we together? So, people just like to sound high nonsense. People like to sound high nonsense. <laughs> right. Let me, <clears throat> let me show you what repentance is. Not according to dictionary. According to Bible. Allow the Bible to interpret itself. Let, let, me, let, me, let, 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 let me work this thing. Man. Let me push this. Let me push this. Luke 24. Verse 47. Luke 24. Luke 24, verse 47. Praise God. Luke 24, verse 47. Watch this. And the Bible says, and that, and that, okay, before we get there, let's pretext. <laughs> oh, let, let's, let's work this thing. Then he opened their minds. Watch this. Remember, we're talking about minds, minds, minds. All, all this while we're talking about minds, right? We're talking about what happens after salvation. You have to grow, and growing is not, uh, is, is intentional, but aging is automatic we're talking about the mind now watch this and uh, watch this then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures remember he had spoken to them they did not understand but then he opened up their minds the veil was removed 
their minds to understand the scriptures and he said to them thus it is written that the christ should suffer on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed so repentance is preached repentance is preached repentance is not a change of behavior i'm going to show you in two minutes okay repentance of forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from jerusalem now please stay with me matthew matthew chapter 3 matthew chapter 3 verse number 2 matthew 3 i'm just go, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna be flowing in those days john the baptist came preaching in the wilderness of judea repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand again repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand so john is preaching he's telling them to repent why because jesus is coming so why should they repent if you are saying repentance is a change of mind is a is a is a, is a change of behavior so if john is saying repent change your behavior that means there's no need for jesus to die because if i can change my behavior there's no need for jesus according to dictionary repentance is crying because you have done something wrong so now if if john is saying repent for the kingdom of god is at hand he's saying that jesus is coming so you need to repent so if if you are saying repentance is a change of behavior why then should jesus come why should john be preaching repentance because jesus is coming Are you still there? Right. According to the dictionary, it's to recognize that you are sorry. Yeah? But we don't use dictionary to interpret the Bible. We allow the Bible to speak for itself. Repentance, according to the Bible, is not a change of behavior, but it is a change of mind. Behavior is level shatamandaba. Repentance is not a change of behavior, but it is a change of mind. So John is saying, repent, change your mindsets for the kingdom of God. Because what they had heard was Jesus, a son shall be given, he shall die for my sins. How can a man die for my sins? And then he ends on the cross and then said, My sins are forgiven. Ah, no, that does not make sense. So John is saying, repent, change your mindset, change your thinking towards him. That's why repentance is preached. So when we preach the gospel, repentance is being preached. So repentance is not crying. Repentance is a change of mind. Repentance is not a change of behavior. Because if I could change my behavior, there was no need for Jesus to come. If I can change my behavior, there was no need for Jesus to come if I can change my behavior. So John said, repent, for Jesus is going to die for you. You will be buried, and on the third day you will rise again. Change the way you are thinking towards him. So repentance is a change of mind. That's why the devil has blinded their minds that they cannot repent, change their thinking <laughs> repentance is preached repentance is not a change of behavior repentance is preached a change of mindset so mindsets how do we pull strongholds strongholds are pulled down by the preaching how do people come to repentance by the preaching so when i preach that's why the bible says the goodness of god tends people to repentance the goodness of God makes you to change your mind. Uh, how can the goodness of God change, change behavior? How can I change behavior because God is... No. The goodness of the Lord tends people to repentance. They change their mind. They change their thinking. The way that they were seeing God. You were thinking that because you're going through this, oh, so God does not love you. The goodness of God makes you to change your mindset from that. <laughs> so repentance is not crying repentance is not a change of behavior repentance is preached repentance is a change of mindset john said repent for jesus is coming to die for you 
He's coming to die for you. He's coming to be buried for you. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. Jonah was sent to preach repentance to Nineveh. Why? Because they were worshipping idols and all this. So he was saying, change your mindset from that. These idols, they have nothing. Change your mindset. Remember, your mind is, is, is so much involved in salvation. For you to have received salvation, you repented. The way you were thinking towards God changed. Then you believed. For you to have believed, your mind changed. That's repentance. Repentance is preached. Repentance is preached. Repentance is not a change of mind. You change how you think towards God. Most of you, you are going through so many things and you have been blaming God for some of the things and you have been questioning God, why me? God, why me? As I'm preaching the gospel, I'm preaching repentance. You are changing your mind from sin. From... Remember, Job, Job said, I have repented from what I thought about God. I thought God was the one that giveth and taketh away. But I have repented from that. Meaning, I have changed my mind from thinking like that. Job did not change his behavior. Job was, the, was a man that was in the right standing, according to Bible. But he began to speak things that God killeth, God taketh away. Then the Bible says what? And then he got to his senses and he, oh my God, man. Okay, let me let me let, let me let me let me push this thing for a little bit. Look at Romans chapter two. <clears throat> I, I really need to close. Look at Romans chapter two. I want to show you something. <clears throat> Praise God. Romans chapter number two, verse number four. Watch this. Or oh, do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing? Pay attention, not knowing. Not knowing. Not knowing. We're talking of repentance. Not knowing. So you, you can only change your mind when you know. Okay? Not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance. Not a change of behavior. Because remember the first word there is not knowing. Look at pretext for you to understand. Do you suppose, O men, who judge those who practice such things and yet do them yourself, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? Verse number five. But because of the hard and impenitent heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of this wrath. Not knowing, not to know. Remember, repentance. Oh my God. Let, let, me, let me close. Let me close. Let me break this down and close. Let me break this down and close. Let me break this down and close. <clears throat> Luke chapter 15. Verse number 17. Let's, let's, let's quickly go there. I'm closing with that. Look, because <clears throat> so, so I want you to come to a place of understanding what repentance is. Okay? It's not a change of behavior. It's a change of mind. Look at Luke. Luke uh, chapter 15, verse 17. Luke 15, verse 17. Praise God. But, okay, this is the prodigal son. This is the prodigal son. This is the prodigal son. Remember the prodigal son had gone away. He said my, to his father, give me my wealth. Give me all my inheritance. I want it now. And he went, he squandered everything. We're talking of the prodigal son. He squandered everything. He squandered everything. Right? Now look at verse, verse 17 of Luke chapter 15 verse 17. This is the prodigal son. After he had gone, he squandered everything. He ate everything and then things were not working out. He started eating with, uh, with pigs and living rough and living all these things and all these kind of things. I want you to see what then happened because we are dealing with repentance. That is not a change of behavior. 
but it's a change of mind. Luke 15 verse 17, now watch this. But when he came to himself, he came to himself, meaning what? When somebody says, ah, this person has come to himself now. He has come to his senses. He has come to his senses. Meaning, he has come to his senses. How many of my father's hired servants are more than, uh, have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger? What is now happening with him is he has come to himself. He is changing his mind because at first he did not know. He did not know. But now he has come back to his senses. Now he knows that the goodness of God leads people to change in your mind. So because he has gone through what he's going through, he then began to think, said, ah, but in my father's house. Because at first he did not know. He, that's why he had to come back to his senses. Because his mind was blinded. He did not know. He comes back to his senses and he says, hi, but in my father's house, even the servants. How many of my father's hired, hired servants, hired servants, have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger. I will rise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and for you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son and all that. But what happened is he came back to his senses. He changed his mind. He repented. That's repentance. Change of mind. The thought... And then came to senses. Thought. He thought. Ha! Ah! And after the thought. He came to his senses. He came to recognize. So repentance in Greek. Is the same word as metanoa. To think. <laughs> to think. The Bible is not an English book. The Bible is not to be translated or interpreted by a dictionary. Allow the original language. So, metanoa, meaning to repentance is metanoa, to think. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. Go back to the original. Don't use dictionary. Dictionary, you'll be telling people, Yo, you need to repent. Change of behavior is not repentance. <laughs> I know, but it's something that we grew up learning. And it's something that we've been saying over and over. So, oh yeah, we need, yeah, people need to repent. Yeah, but unless if you're saying they need to repent, has changed their mind. I understand. But if you're saying change of behavior, it's not repentance. Change of behavior is different from repentance. So repentance is metanoia, meaning to think. So he came to his senses because he, he knew. Because at first he did not know. That word no. Gnosis. Gnosis. Right? Then. But before he came to Gnosko. Gnosis. To know. He did not know. Aneo. Remember. To think meta neo. Not knowing aneo. So the two is meta. Meta means shift. So, meta shift. Neo, no. Meta neo. Repentance. So, meta. Meta, meta, meta is to shift. So, what happened? He shifted his knowing. Meta noah. <laughs> meta noah. To think, right? So, meta is to shift. So, he changed his mind. Meta shift. Neo. Knowing. So he changed his thinking. There was a shifting with his thinking. So the key word there is to think. He changed his mind to think that the goodness, he had to change his mind to think, to come to a place of gnosko, to know that the goodness of God tends people to repentance. So meta is to shift. Repentance means metanoia. In the original Greek. But if you use the dictionary. You will be thinking that repentance is a change of behavior. No. Repentance is not a change of behavior. 
repentance of for forgiveness of sins is preached. So repentance is preached. So what am I doing right now? I'm preaching. As I'm preaching, guess what? I'm pulling down strongholds. I'm pulling down strongholds. Oh, now watch this. Ah, let me close with this. Ah, Let me close with this scripture. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 1. The weapons we fight are with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they are divine power to demolish strongholds. Right? We de what are strongholds? We demolish arguments with every pretentious that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every what? Every thought to make it obedient to God. Did you hear that? Imaginations. These are strongholds. So stronghold is not like some... Spirit, something to do. There's a stronghold. The spirit, you need to cast it. You need to sow a seed. No, sir. Strongholds. Teaching. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm pulling down strongholds. I'm pulling down mindsets. I am doing what we call meta. That's why we get the word metamorphosis. Meta. Shift. So what I'm doing there is I'm teaching. I'm shifting mindsets. So this is, I'm pulling down strongholds. The things that you were thinking were high and all that, that we're, we're pulling them so that the word of God takes preeminence in your life. That's why we declare things like, I am what the word says I am. I can do what the word says I can do. I have what the word says I have. You are only saying that because you have come to a place of ginosko acknowledging knowledge epigenosis epigenosis to know genosis acknowledging epigenosis so you are coming to a place of accurate precise comprehensive insight so meta shift repentance metanoa to think the change of mind now watch this Repentance deals with knowledge, not behavior. Meaning, the first step to the gospel is repentance. You change your mind. Because people don't want to be, believe in the gospel because of mindsets. They know, ah, God ah, is not real. His God is this. God is that. So, they have to change their mindset. Why? Because your mind is involved in, in the gospel. Your mind is involved. So, this is why we say, even when you go to church... When you go to church, please carry your mind with you. Don't leave your mind at home and go to church and leave your mind. Go with your mind at ch to church. Go with your mind. You just get there and then you are just drinking some, some milk. They give you milk and bath in this milk. Buy, put these stones in your pocket. Uh, go with your brains. Go with your mind. Because the mind is critical. Because this is the area, this is the target that the devil attacks. That's why the Bible talk about an idle mind. An idle mind is a workshop of the devil. So he would blind their minds. He would blind their minds. So it is the mind. The, the prodigal son, he came back to his senses and said, no, 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 no. Even servants. And guess what? I have news for you. You. Imagine, he is saying servants have bread. You, imagine you are not a servant, you are a child of God. I declare you will never lack in this season in the mighty name of Jesus. How can you lack? So the thought Jesus taught them, this is why Jesus would teach. Jesus was teaching, teaching. What was Jesus teaching? Why was he teaching? He was teaching, 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 teaching. Why was he teaching? He was changing mindsets. Changing mindsets. So the teaching of the gospel is aimed at changing mindsets the teaching of the gospel is aimed at changing mindsets so when minds are changed it brings you it brings your union with god solely solidified it's solidified rather your gospel the gospel 
Your union with the Father, when your mind is renewed, your relationship with God becomes solidified. That is repentance for you. So it is a change of mind. So when your mind is renewed, let this your mind be renewed. Meaning you get there's a there's a way of thinking you have to think. Because everything that you do in this life, everything concerning your life has to do with your thinking. That's why the Bible says, as a man thinketh, as a man thinketh, so easy. That means you become right. Watch this. You are where you are right now. Because of your thoughts. You will be where you will be because of your thoughts. Again, you will become what you will become because of your thoughts. As a man thinketh, so is he. My beloved, the next thing after salvation is spiritual growth. We need to grow. So that when you grow, you come to terms and understanding of what you have received through salvation what you have received the inheritance that is in the saints you are partakers of the glory so when you grow you come to that place so repentance is preached so we preach right now we are preaching repentance we are preaching repentance we are preaching repentance oh i'm so excited listen let me allow you to go but before i go let me just pray for you i just pray father in the name of jesus i thank you for everybody under the sound of my voice i pray that there has been a shift in their mindset the way that they look at you lord the way that they think of you lord let there be a shift in let them know that your goodness will turn people to shifting their mindsets changing their thinking patterns i pray that lord as they continue to grow in grace lord in every area of their lives let they continue to grow in the name of jesus in the prophetic let them grow in that grace lord in the mighty name of jesus i thank you even for those that are watching from germany i thank you for those that are watching from botswana watching from south africa watching from nigeria watching from america father watching from um palo Zija, spain wherever they are watching from lord I declare and I decree, may their light so shine. May they draw men to themselves in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for everyone. I thank you for Peter, Lord. Apostle Peter, I thank you for Kathy. I thank you for Luviwani, Lord. I thank you for Rosemary, prophetess. I thank you for Mary, my pastor. I thank you for Boitumelo. I thank you for everybody that is watching right now. I thank you for Florence, Lord. I declare and I decree, Lord, let your goodness be made manifest in their lives i thank you for daisy in the name of jesus i pray that these lord will be beacons of light wherever they shall go they shall be the light father you have declared it in your word that we are the light of the world a city that can they cannot be hid listen i declare this over you in the name of jesus your lights you are the light of the world. Wherever you shall go, they will not deny you access. You are the light of the world. And the Gentiles, they shall come to thy light. Kings, they shall come to thy dwelling. You are the light of the world. You cannot be hid. I thank you for Prophet Cam Jackson. And I thank you for that which you are doing through him in America. Let, may, they, may, may they be so much light in America. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. So much light through your servants. Father, I thank you. I honor you in the name of Jesus. I declare and I decree, Lord, that they are going out is blessed. They are coming in is blessed. Whatever that they shall touch in every of their endeavors, Lord, let there be a manifestation of your goodness. Father, those that are trusting you for healing, I declare. You said it in your word, we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And right now, by the authority that has been bestowed upon my life, I declare divine healing in the name of Jesus. For many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them all. Father, let there be a manifestation of that deliverance from affliction. Every form of affliction, I command it to dry up in the mighty name of Jesus. Every form of sickness, I command it to dry up in the mighty name of Jesus. Every form of mental issues, I command them to dry up in the name of Jesus. I declare over you, may you be manifest the presence of god may you manifest the goodness of god may your voice be heard 
wherever you shall go may your voice be heard may your voice be heard wherever you shall go may your voice be heard may your voice be heard ale batro biasun tragija la mahanta ya basia pepro diasuja la mandi i declare favor over you apostle peter i want to declare favor over you i want to declare favor over you i want to pray that god will connect you to your destiny helpers i my prayer for you apostle is that you will no longer be working whether you have been promoted to management i really don't care but i would want for you to have your own establishment whether it is in the 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 uh, what do you call it parozija la mahanta ba degradia so events events department you know when you do events we do events catering and stuff like that you do events you do events of this events of this you gather people you do events and it's like um you're managing something it's like i'm seeing you're managing something or you're in your team leader or but you're in charge of something my prayer is that god connects you with a destiny helper somebody that will come and say listen let's partner together Oh God help me. Let's partner together and you will start your own establishment. You will start your own establishment. I this is my prayer for you. This is my prayer for you. This is my prayer for you. Uh it's true say I am doing management. Like I said whether it's management or team leading but I see you in leadership. But my prayer, my prayer is that you are connected but it has to do with these events you'll be doing some events something i don't know events something but that's my prayer for you i pray that god opens that door for you or allows you to see the door rather may god allow you to see the doors every opportunity that comes along your way may god allow you to see it in the name of jesus Bomkazi, it is good to see you. My beloved, I have to love you and I have to leave because I had said I was finishing now. I've just gone ahead with uh, a few more minutes. So, But I just want to love you. Temba, I love you. I love you all. My beloved, have a glorious, blessed week that is filled with manifestation. Oh, you will manifest. You will manifest the goodness of God. Praise God. I have to love you and I have to leave you. Shalom. Shapa.